Hello friend, how is it going? Welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. Look what I have today in my shop. I will say absolute classic, isn't it? 91 Toyota pickup with approximately 240,000 miles. I think these trucks are absolute legend. Don't you think? And these are one of the reasons why Toyota is so successful, at least in my opinion. Look at her. She's cutie. Let's have a quick look on interior. These details. Very simple. Instrument cluster. Look at a dashboard. Obviously, as we know, no cracks, no nothing. Look at this. Stereo. Isn't that funny? Stick shift as we know and these seat covers. I will say this is absolute classic. And as all of you guessed correctly, it's a two-wheel drive. And she's being used for what? Landscaping around the property. And the owner made an appointment for tune-up. Whatever tune-up means, right? So she said, hey, let's spend some money on her, keep her running. I and my friends are using her for landscaping. We want to keep her for a long time, running good. So I will bring her. Well, the owner came and she said, hmm, I know I made an appointment for a tune-up or whatever, but on the way here, the brakes were kind of not braking really good. I felt like I had to push on the brake pedal a lot. My friend also who borrowed her just on the weekend hauling some dirt, she said, yeah, the brakes are Something's up with the brakes, so if you can please start with that. So she brought her to the parking lot, so all I did, I drove her just, what is it, 10 yards. But the first thing I saw immediately is that the brake warning light when the engine was running, I can put it on so you can see it. See that? That brake warning light was on and it stays on. So let's pop up the hood and see what's happening. If this old lady, what well, the old lady, old Toyota, 91 Toyota truck, what does she need? Do I remember where this opening thing is on these ones? I never really work on these old ones. They're kind of rare to me. Here we go. So, hood prop is right here. You can see the engine is 22 RED legend. And uh, <laughs> right up to bed. Wow. I need you to see this. This is unbelievable. No wonder the different drivers, different people are saying something up with the brakes. They have a warning light in the dashboard in the instrument cluster. I wish they opened the hood also, but some people will not do that. They have asked for that. So that might be first time ever I see the vehicle coming to the service with absolutely empty brake fluid reservoir. There's some wetness on this level sensor, but looking on the sides, this is completely empty. Wow! So the brake fluid had to disappear somewhere. I don't see anything dripping or leaking of it. Let's put her on the lift 
and have an inspection. Before bringing her up, let's make absolutely sure we don't see any leaks here. All right, so this is completely empty. I don't see any even like a remainings of the leaks. And you can see the lines, how they split here. It's very interesting. One of them goes to that front wheel right there, down there. And the other lines are actually crawling on the other side. I think, because believe it or not, regarding Toyota, I believe it went here because some versions could have a ABS, but this Toyota, this model has absolutely no ABS. This is the basic of the basic. It doesn't have a power steering, neither the air conditioning. So you can see so far all the brake lines as they are curved down there. Everything is dry. I don't see any possible spritz under the pressure out of it or damaged pain from that brake fluid. So as we said, let's lift her up. So now we are under. Driver front brake, again, we don't see any leaks. Uh, the line is good, correct? Passenger front brake, we don't see any leaks. And the rubber and the hard rigid hose, it's good. Now we are under, this is the clutch system, which is hydraulic clutch. We can see the fuel line, but also right above fuel line are the brake lines. We were basically looking at this area from from the other uh, from above. Now we are under, so that lift makes super easy everything. And this, uh, I'm just looking around with you for pure entertainment. Did you see that? You see the shocks sway bar, but. You don't see actually the springs. Well, because this is that old system with the torsion bars. You see these puppies? This is instead of coil spring in front. So suspension has a torsion bars. Very old design on those old Toyotas. But let's not get distracted. So we know the brake lines are not on this side. That ends, there was just one line coming to this caliper. So let's continue. There's some wetness, but this is like oil. It's not spray from the lines. This is a fuel line. We are still on the frame and that will be the brake lines. So far, everything is dry. We have a fuel tank here. This is a parking brake cable. I see already some wetness here. Do you see that? Do you see how it, this is all wet? And I also see peeling of paint. There was a remaining of the paint on that leaf spring. And guess what? Here we got, here we got the reason. Do you see this? Do you see this valve? And that's bad news for the owner. Because these puppies are expensive. I'm trying to sneak, uh, trying to put that camera in this very little space. So I'm sorry for the banging and so on. You are slightly sideways, but that's all I can do for you. See, it's difficult here. And also I don't fit here, but this is, well, what we are looking at. This is the valve, which feeds both rear wheels so it will feed that drum and it feeds this side you can see it this is called toyota they were thinking oh when somebody puts a heavy load in this very tiny truck right like how much heavy load you can put in this tiny truck not much but anyway the engineers said if somebody will put the heavy load the brakes need to break more in the back right so when there's nothing nothing in the back the, there's not much braking needed here this is actually this is missing a bolt it's supposed to be up there this is the spring of that and that's a load sensing proportioning and by 
pass valve. So it can be also called LSP and BV valve, right? So this is what we are looking at. And as you can see, it's dripping. The remainings of that brake fluid were dripping from it. They were dripping here on the chalk. They damaged the paint right here. I hope you see the details, how it's weird, right? But if you look on the other side, this is how it's supposed to look like. And this is how it's peeling off because brake fluid is very aggressive. It will damage. As to my knowledge, to my knowledge, I don't think I can bypass it and get rid of it. To my knowledge, there, these valves are not rebuildable. And I will have to call Toyota dealer and try to shop around to see how much this will cost this customer. And I was afraid that this will happen. I kind of remember from the past these parts are expensive. What is the good news? It's still available. So as we said, it's a rear load sensing proportioning and bypass valve, LSP and BV. For this particular two-wheel drive truck, because I think it's different for four-wheel drive, the Toyota's number is 479100-35231. They say the retail is 299 plus tax, so that's a 300 plus almost 30 bucks so let's say it will be 325 with tax and fortunately it's available and it can be replaced i really quickly looked online before i will miss the deadline for ordering the parts i'm looking on the clock so i spent like five ten minutes looking for that number which Toyota gave me i found the different valves but they are for different vehicles and the ordering number is completely different. So I'm not sure if maybe my number supersedes the other ones, but I'm going to order it from Toyota uh, because I don't want to wait uh, one week for some aftermarket thing which will not fit at the end. It's also obviously you can understand it's my liability that the job is done correctly and it's a break so that's really important that it, that it is done correctly if you ever did this on your own and you have an item number for others for the other subscribers and uh, people who are watching this video and you know replacement other number well please share it underneath the comments but for me for myself and my liability you obviously understand I will go with OEM part and it doesn't matter it's kind of pricey what can we do the part is leaking there is no rebuild kit for it which I don't mind to do take it off and disassemble it on the bench and put some new o-ring or a seal but uh, it seems to be there's no repair uh, gasket set for it so we will go with unfortunately what 325 something like that and replace it if I will have a time if it comes tomorrow if I will have a time in my schedule I would love to film it for you that means the video will continue if not this will be the end of the video so I hope you find it interesting I found interesting that somebody comes uh, to my shop with completely empty brake fluid reservoir I never saw it empty like this being driven to the shop that's my first time ever so please share your comments under the video and be subscribed I have way more coming your way soon I will catch you later my friend